everybody, Jean here. I'm feeling a little bit better um, and I'm just going to get right into my tutorial for my flying geese block. Remember I was telling you about it. Um, I've just done a few rows and I was looking at the, the um, video that I've done. I have a compilation of, of, of a few of the videos I've done um, to how I construct this block and I got to the point where I was going to be doing the sashing. And that's where I'm going to stop it. So this is sort of just like part one of this video. Um, on how to construct this block. It's awesome. You're going to love it. Um, it's quick. It's easy. It's a very simple quilt. We can make flying geese in all sorts of different ways. I'm going to address that in my next video. Uh, again, I am feeling a bit better. Thank you so much. I'm not looking forward to Tuesday because that's when I go to the dentist, but never mind. My chest is so much better and I really appreciate everybody. Um, so I'm just going to show you the video of me um, sewing my block and ironing it and how I've constructed it. So t stay tuned to part two um, of my next video when I finish my quilt. Thanks everybody. So here I am. I'm going to be cutting my 10 inch squares that I was saying I was using. And I got this 10 inch square pack uh, from a local quilt store. And I have to show you Hopefully you can see this. This is fabric by uh, Riley Blake and it's called Dutch Treat. And it was a, a pack of 10 inch squares and they were, there's 42 pieces in this bundle, right? The original price was $34.99. Oh my word, I got it for 50%. So again, I headed to the back room. Um, so instead of $35, I spent half of that, whatever that is, 50% of $35. Oh, yeah, $35. So anyway, that's my 42-inch pack of um, these 10-inch layer cakes, and it's a really pretty, uh, it's called Dutch Treat. Um, there's several, there's several pieces in, several same designs in the uh, pack. But what I'm going to be doing is I messed about with this this little thing and then I, uh, this little block, and then I, I went online and I actually saw that it's been done to death. Uh, I'm not, there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, Jenny Dones has done it. Um, and so, and, and uh, a lot of people though are saying with this particular flying geese block, which is this, it ends up looking like this. Um, and I'm going to address this thing, that there's a lot of wasted fabric. And I'm like, okay, folks, there's a little bit of wasted fabric. Cut me a break. If you don't want to waste your fabric, don't make the block. Like, oh, that's my thought about it. And then people were commenting on her on when she was doing that tutorial. And actually, people were quite nasty. I don't understand that. Why don't they just move along? So anyway, there's a little bit of wasted block. If you don't want to make it this way, then you don't have to. Flip an act. Don't work, make, don't make it. So anyway, what I do is I, w I was messing about. And I was actually messing about because this is like the um, one seam... Um, uh, like I did my 10 minute quilt block with like the three seams. Um, I was messing about and quite a few <laughs> 10 inch squares went, <laughs> went, went, went awry. They, they, uh, they were hurt in the making of this because I don't know, Jenny Doan said you cut off an inch of it. I don't do that. And this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm making this block here. You, I, I cut from my, um, this is a 10 inch square and I cut my actually cut from my own uh, stash from a ton of fabric that I had I have all this white fabric um, I cut um, a million five inch square pieces which would be a charm pack that you would be buying so I have my charm pack squares again I've I cut a, a million of them and I have my 10 inch squares and what I want to do is I want to line up my 10 inch squares I do quite a few at a time they're cut pretty good and this is how I do it. My 10 inch squares, I take this ruler here and I take this. This is how I cut my fabric. This is a six and a half inch rule. Um, I just put my five inch ruler, my five inch line down here. And this is my Fiskars ruler, which I love. The, the rotary blade is right on that line right there. So it's five inches. I've done it and there's my five inches cut there. So I have my um, I have my pile of my t um, five inch by ten inch squares, and I'm going to take you over to the machine and show you how I actually sew this. Okay. 
So this is the block that we're going to be making. The flying geese block, which you've seen me cut, my 10 inch squares and my five inch squares, which I have my whole pile. I set everything up on my machine uh, when I'm going to be chain piecing. Now you've seen me chain piecing before, um, put that there. And um, uh, I find that this is a very quick and easy quilt block to make chain piece because literally it's the, the one seam as I was saying it's it's a miracle and again I reiterate it does waste fabric and I'm thinking I was trying to think like what what where's the waste well it's because in this block if you would do it the conventional way obviously you're just using a, a half of you know you're using that much and that much whereas you're using an, an entire two in two entire charm squares come on what the heck and then this is a this is a whole piece this is a five inch by ten inch piece of fabric that's making up this this flying geese so again if you're if you're going to complain about uh wasting fabric don't even don't even tune in here um this is how i'm doing it and it's cool um so here i am this is what i'm going to be making so what i have is i have my pile here and i i fold i'm going to be chain piecing it and I've taken, I've taken this fabric and this actually has, I don't know if you can see it, it has a, this little white fabric has a, has a design on it. I got this from Connecting Threads. It's actually, it's extra wide fabric, backing fabric. It's a real pretty, uh, uh, sort of a, a, a white on a white dot fabric. So it has a right and a left, uh, a, a front and a back. So you want to be careful. Um, if you are using a front and a back, if not, if it's just white fabric, then you don't have to. So I, I obviously want my uh, my bright sides together. So what I'm going to be doing with my 10 inch by 5 inch piece of fabric is I'm going to fold it in half like that. And again, I, I sort of jiggery pokered this, this block about. This is how I do it. I have to trim a little bit, but I've made it bigger. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be attaching this with the fold side up. This is one seam. The fold side up goes just a slightly, slightly bigger than quarter of an inch down on this side. And then, of course, it's going to be a little bit more on that, on that end. But that's okay. We'll just do it like this. Again, right sides together. Remember my 10-inch block. This is almost the same exact principle. I'm lining up these two top ends of my white 5-inch square. And... I put that under, I've already started chain piecing. I put that under my quarter inch foot and I just stitch along. Now you can chain piece the whole lot of them if you like. I So I cut my 42 inch, 10 inch squares in half. So that would give me, uh, what, 84 of these? So that would be 84 blocks because you need one of these and two of these to make one block, right? Yeah. Um, so you could chain piece all 84 or however many you want to make. Um, but I do like about, I do it about 10 at a time. So I'll show you, I've actually, I've actually done quite a few. I've chained them together and I will, uh, I'll start cutting these apart as I do. So I've chained these together like this. Remember how I cut my chains apart? This is one seam, like, oh my word one seam. Oh, I've chained quite a bit of them together here. Here we go. Yeah, and this, look, look how quickly, that, this is all these blocks I've made up. Um, so now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking this over, oh, sorry, oh my, I'm going to take this over to my ironing board, and you don't want to mess about, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is, more than you need but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening this up like this trying to keep my hand out of the way you have this and then you're going to be doing that and there is your flying geese but i'll take you over to my ironing board and show you my little trick okay so here i am at my ironing board i've taken I've taken this bit, as you saw, as, as, I, as we sewed it here, here's the white. And what I'm going to be doing, actually, as I open up, let me get a few of these, as I open up these pieces, I'm actually going to sew this, I mean, I'm going to press this 
And usually on that, remember on that 10, that 10 minute quilt block, we never press that, that seam there. But when we go to turn it to make that miraculous block, but in this case, I want you to do that. So you have this piece like this, your two charm twists, and then you take your, your piece, your, your piece that you've well, done one seam, and look, you've made this triangular piece right there, this flying geese. And why I like to iron that is I like to line that, that line up with that seam underneath. So each side is absolutely perfect. And then you sort of pull out your bottom bits here, and then you iron that along like that. You press that real, real good. You know me and my pressing. Now you're thinking, what do I do with all that? I'll show you that in a minute. So let's do another one. So I come along, I set my seam, oh my word. There you go, there you do that. You set your seam, you pull this along. You just wanna sort of touch, press along there. And look how quickly this does. And then you pull this gently, that's already secured. You take your pressed line and you match it up nice. You pull this out nice and taut, but not too tight. And then you press that along there and you have a beautiful flying geese block with enough allowance for your seam. Oh, somebody's calling me. I wonder who that is. So here we go. Here's another one I'm doing. Um, I'm pressing it along here. I'm pulling that just along there. This is such a pretty fat, such pretty fabric line. And then you pull it along. So see, I'm, 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 almost, I'm almost like chain pressing. <laughs> and, and, and it works up so quickly. Line that folded line up with that seam underneath. Press it real nice. Now you're saying to yourself, what the heck do, what, what, this, what in the world is this, Jean? What, what, what do you do with this thing? And I guess that's where you could say there's the wasted fabric, but please. Actually, I quite like that because it gives you a, um, it gives you another layer of fabric. This makes up even a warmer quilt because you actually have this extra layer of fabric. So those people who say you're wasting fabric, eh, boo on them. So anyway, here we go. So I'll, I'll tell you how I'm going to address that. So I'm going, to back, I'm going to take this back to my machine and show you what my next step is. So here I am back at my machine and I've, I've, uh, I've pressed these, I've ironed these as you can see, but what I have here is this extra piece here. And maybe that's where, where Jenny Doan said you cut off the extra piece, but I don't know, I, I got all confused. What I do is you end up with a piece like this with your two charm squares. What I do is I'm going to stitch real, real close, right along that edge. I mean, just, I'm just gonna catch that, that green here on the, on the back side, on the white fabric. Um, oh, look at that, I screwed up. Look at that one, right in, look at that. Oh, mate, never mind, forget that one. Okay, so here what I'm gonna be doing <laughs> is I'm gonna try to get my, my needle right on there. Yeah. On that little white line, oh, oh geez, yeah, right there, put my presser foot down, and I'm just going to catch this white. This is on the back of the block. See that block, that white? I'm just catching that. You're not going to see this. This is going to be in the seam allowance, but I'm just securing that, the, um, the, the uh, fabric down here on the back. Let me see if I can get right in there, sort of. Again, you can chain stitch this. That's it. Just just catch that white um, fabric along there just to uh, secure it. And then I'll show you how we're going to trim this and make this perfect block. Again, you can chain stitch that to your heart's content. So I'll be back. So now you see that I have these, these pressed, these ironed blocks that I've pressed, but they have this jagged edge that needs to be trimmed off. And again, what I do is I'll put it on my cutting mat, and then you could probably do this with a ruler and your rotary cutter. You just, right next to that stitching, remember? I did that little bit of stitching at the edge of that five inch those five inch charm squares. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little handy dandy ruler. Again, I just want to cut off 
so it's exactly equal with my my white fabric I'm going to cut off that bit of um, fabric underneath so I just cut that off like that and there I have my perfect uh, flying geese block here's another one I'm doing it on the wrong side I just want to cut that off so I have all the same exact size blocks so there we go and I have enough now to sew them so that we have perfect points and I'll show you how I do that so I'm back at my machine and I want to be starting to sew these flying geese blocks together again I'm going to address this part here because this is open I guess you could leave it open and actually I was going to if you remember I was I this is the the block that you can you can roll along this is my 10 inch block you would start you would start at this end here remember and you would stitch along to the point and then you would roll that along there to make curved um actually i like that uh, i like that effect on some blocks but on the flying geese oh, my flipping phone on the flying geese i'm just going to actually be be stitching it along here when i actually go to quilt this actual block so that will be stitched down when i go to quilt it after it's sandwiched and basted together but for now i'm going to be making rows i've already started a row Here's a row of this block that I've already started. And as you can see, my points are perfect. And I'm going to be just attaching each block to one to another. I've made it a little bit more than a quarter of an inch here, as you can see. So, so you won't, you never have, you never ever will cut that point off. So you want to put your uh, designs as they're pleasing to you. And you want to sew from the white side the, the, this white the, the, the charm square side because that way you can see the point so you put your your, your your machine in and again the mine is slightly wider just slightly wider than quarter of an inch which is fine and I, I can see right there my point so I just very carefully whichever way the seam goes very carefully line line this up don't have to worry about that because remember that's secured there. To come down, quarter inch seam. And if you'd want to, you can actually just chain quite a few of them together. Um, because then you can just, you have, you have units of two as opposed to just taking it off and, and uh, you know, keep, keep just sewing rows. So you have units of two, so you sew two together, two together. And again, I can see where my point there is going to be and so I'm going to stitch right along there just that's just slightly bigger than quarter of an inch which is fine and then I come along I, I put my edges together and I'll do I'll do one more I'm doing it I'm, I'm sewing it on the back I'm on the white charm square side I can see where my point is. This one's a little less. This is about a quarter of an inch. It's fine. Push that under there. So I've, ch I've chained several of them together. And uh, and then you come back and here's my, my, uh, my blocks as it were. And then I put this one together like this. And you just keep continuing it like that. You notice I haven't even pinned anything. This works up incredibly quickly. I can see where my point is. All my seams match up beautifully. I'm going to push that right under so I get right up to that point. This is two and two that I put together now. So here is my, my row growing. Look how quickly that 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 grew like I can make up these in literally just just a few minutes so that's what I mean when this is literally almost a one minute quilt block let me just add let me just touch this one and I have a row here how long did that take and I'm chattering away so here I go I'll add these two blocks to this white sides I can see my point I can see my point there 
and I have enough room. I haven't like left it like push that under there. I haven't left it so it's so it's so tight that I cut my points off. Oh my God. And um there you go. So there's two. And then look at my look at that. I have this row. Just as we were sitting here talking, I have this flying geese row. I'll press them really good, and then I'll show you how I'm going to add my sashings in between. Now, I've, I'm making all of my um, blocks, and this I just want to throw in this um, just for a few seconds. As you've seen, I've started, I just started um, for demonstration, to, well, and to make my quilt, to throw these, um, to throw these finished blocks together. So... I'm having to figure out um, how many blocks I have. Um, I have yet to count them, but I just wanted to show you how uh, when I'm working with scrap uh, scraps of fabric or um, all different sorts of fabric, how I actually uh, choose my pattern, as it were, for m to make my quilt. I've just put these two, two rows together. Um, but what I would actually do is I take the fabric line, which, whatever it is, and I will, I will divide it up into colorways. Um, I didn't really do it on that one, but it's, it's okay because I, I pulled. So in this, in this fabric line, I basically have greens, blues, and then the, um, uh, the pinks and the reds. And then also, um, there's, oh, where is it? They're, they're, they're over by my ironing board. Um, the ones I have to finish yet. I have a lot of, I have a, a several yellows and several sort of a, a white background. So I'll actually put the yellows into the green pile and then I'll put the whites into this red pile that I have. And what I want to do is try, and then I'll count them up. And I'm not really uh, too bothered about it, but I do like when I actually start making my rows to pull, um, like one from each colorway and then that's how I'll start constructing my rows and maybe I'll put the blue the pink and the green and then just keep adding and then just keep adding the blue uh, maybe it'll be a white one the next because I pulled it from this pile um, over here and then that gives me a, a very well rounded you don't you don't realize what you're looking at but because of the fabric line you get a very well rounded um, uh, uh, design of your quilt. As I said, the, the quilt designer has actually done all of the work for us um, in in doing this, in making the colorways. Um, and it's just it's just a little hint. It's just a little tip I have. And also another thing, um, just as an aside, uh, in in this video, um, my other ten and ten minute quilt block. Remember, I I didn't ever, I never, um, I didn't like that seam in the back. So remember when I took that out? Well, this is the same principle. I'm not bothered here, um, but what I am bothered about is, to a certain extent, this um, ironed seam here. But actually, when I go to quilt that, that will probably, I'm going to free motion quilt this, I'll probably make a bit of an interest uh, of that seam, actually. So it doesn't really bother me. And even if I were even if I were just straight stitching, I might even stitch that down um, and do it do it just a little curve. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to quilt it, but for for some reason that seam there that shows um, doesn't really bother me on this on this thing. And one other thing is these are really large. These are really large blocks that I've made, so they're actually what. Uh, uh, nine, nine and a half inches, something like, that. like t almost nine and a half inches by five inches. Um, it's a, it's a big block, but I experimented and I, I used two and a half inch squares and a two and a half inch by five inch, um, square. So, so with my, so this is my five inch, my five inch charm square that I cut in half. So you can make the same exact principle there's my two little uh, two and a half inch squares, and then I did the exact same stitching thing. I, I, I put that together, and then I, I sewed it like that, and it makes this little charming little uh, five inch five inch square 
a, a five inch rectangle, I keep saying squares, pardon me, five inch rectangle flying geese unit. So anyway, that's just in a little aside. I just thought I would show you how I actually pull my colors to make my, my, my quilts coordinate. A lot of people say my color ways are good. Well, they're not. The designer has, the, the fabric's doing most of the work, as I always say. Let your fabric do the work. Okay, so I'm going to continue putting my rows together. Um, I'm going to count my blocks, see what I have, figure out the math, or ask my husband about the math, and then um, I'll start um, with the sashing. So um, just a little, little hint, you can make these smaller. Okay, see ya.